Welcome everyone to today's webcast, Social CRM, presented by MotorAge and sponsored by Mitchell One. I'm Shannon Brandyberry, Managing Editor of MotorAge Magazine, and I will be your moderator during today's webcast. Gathering new business and retaining your quality customers is a key component of today's independent repair shop. A solid customer retention marketing program, most often referred to as CRM, is an important part of the process and can help you increase your bottom line. Today we have with us Brian Warfield, a Senior Product Manager for the Mitchell One Social CRM product line. Throughout the webcast, Brian will outline for you the value of target marketing, utilizing consistent service reminders, how to improve your overall brand awareness, and using social media to reach today's customers and keep them coming back. Brian has been in the automotive software business for more than 20 years and earned his bachelor's degree in marketing from the University of Cincinnati College of Business. And with that, let's look further into CRM and how it can help your shop. Brian, I'll th turn things over to you now. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate that. And I want to start off by just mentioning that there could be some folks out there that weren't aware that Mitchell actually does uh, provide marketing services, but uh, we have been doing this for quite a while. Uh, and uh, we've been doing it for five or six years now. And uh, I think I have some really great news for those uh, out there listening. And uh, really the message here is what you see at the top of the slide. And that is that, that you can have it all. And uh, you know, just in case you thought that uh, it was too expensive or too difficult or there was too much work involved and, and, and was going to take time maybe that you didn't have, the great news is that there's never never been a better time to purchase uh, marketing services uh, for the aftermarket shop. You'll notice my first bullet of point there, comprehensive. You know, a program, you know, whether it's ours or anyone's, you really want to make sure that you're addressing uh, not only retaining your customers or and bringing them back more often and making sure they're coming to your business instead of your competitors, but you want to make sure that uh, you're attracting new customers to your business. So whatever solution you, you uh, select, you want to make sure that you're retaining and attracting new customers. Uh, the second bullet there says automated. Uh, you know, our approach is that you guys, you know, you're very busy in your business. Uh, you're already wearing several hats. Uh, our take is that in most cases you don't want to wear an additional hat, which is the marketing hat. So at least our program is designed to provide value whether or not you really uh, do anything or not. So it's really a do it for me sort of situation. So uh, just again, if you, in case you thought it was too much work, uh, you can actually get value from a product, from a, a marketing services product with really little to no effort on your part. Uh, affordable, great price value. As I said, there's never been a better time. Uh, these products have been out there. They're, they're pretty mature. They've been in the marketplace. They're, they're proven now. Uh, and uh, I think you'll see as I go through some of the bullets and what you can expect to get from mar a marketing service uh, product in, our, in the aftermarket that it's just an incredible value. It really is. So you know, for under $100 a month, you can, you can really uh, do uh, quite a bit, maybe even more than you, you thought. Uh, personalized, uh, our approach is that, again, uh, you don't want to necessarily become uh, a marketing expert and wear that marketing hat every day. Uh, so uh, we actually have a, a consultant you work with. Uh, you'll know them by name. And so uh, anytime you have a question, you can pick up the phone and, and speak to them. And then again, taking the responsibility off of uh, the shop owner, uh, we uh, actually go outbound to report the results. Uh, we'll call you. Uh, if that's what you'd like us to do, and we also automatically send an email report uh, every month, uh, and also uh, you have the option to receive that weekly. So you can have it all. Uh, we believe that it's probably not uh, as expensive or difficult or as much work as maybe uh, some folks think it might be. Uh, we really divide our program uh, in, as I said, a comprehensive solution is always going to involve retaining your existing customers, making sure they're coming back to your business, and then attracting new customers. So that's how we divide our product. Uh, it's easy. It's a nice, convenient place to uh, really uh, draw a line and explaining exactly what you can expect from uh, marketing services in the aftermarket. You can see on the left here uh, that we're talking all about retention. So 
how do we uh, continue to make sure that those customers are coming back to your shop, bring them back uh, more frequently uh, and more often. So I'm going to first talk about retention, and then I'll talk about new customer acquisition. Uh, we generally refer to our product uh, and those product levels uh, as eCRM, and, um, and then our uh, new customer acquisition product as social CRM, because we get more into uh, the social elements of the product, uh, raising the shop's visibility on the Internet, uh, managing their reputation by way of reviews, that kind of thing. So, uh, so if you hear me use these terms, uh, that's what I'm talking about, really dividing sort of our product between retention and then a new customer acquisition. Some of the uh, retention features that you're going to want to look for, uh, you'll notice the word automatic in the first bullet point uh, in this particular slide. Uh, we automatically send out service reminders. Again, you, the shop simply has to close invoices uh, within their shop management system. Uh, we pick that information up and then we'll send out uh, service reminders based on the mileage in the next scheduled service uh, that's recommended by the manufacturer. So very key point here, it's all happening in the background. You simply use your management system every day uh, and the uh, service reminders are automatically going out. Uh, the email matching, uh, you may or may not be aware that there is the ability to, uh, they call it an email append, uh, we call it an eConnect email match. And that's where we'll uh, take your database uh, when you start out on the program and we'll uh, match it against the database to try to find just as many emails as possible. Typically we're going to find somewhere between 20-25% of the database. So if the average shop has about 2,000 customers in their database, we're going to jumpstart the program with about four or 500 email matches just to get the shop started. We also give the shop uh, uh, counter cards and posters and uh, other tools to actually uh, collect emails at the front counter. Uh, the third item here is a consumer uh, loyalty website. So uh, one way that we ensure that that consumer is coming back to just your shop is that we provide them with a website that has the history for their vehicle for only services performed at, at your shop. Uh, and uh, I'll talk more about that, but it really does help to uh, make sure that that consumer is coming back to your business. A thank you after every visit uh, for those uh, customers in the database that we have an email for when the, an invoice is closed, uh, we'll go ahead and send that, uh, send that thank you email. Obviously, it makes a lot of sense to show your gratitude for that customer. It will go a long way and again, ensuring that they come back to your shop. Uh, my fifth item there, personalized uh, marketing support agent, really taking the burden off of the, the shop owner uh, and really putting it on the support agent to uh, recommend, uh, tune and tweak the program, change coupons, uh, making sure your brand and your message is consistent. That's something that your agent can help you with. Uh, we also uh, added this year the ability to do target market email blasts. So, at any, uh, on any given day, let's say you come in on a Monday, it's a, it's a little bit light, uh, you don't have a lot of business in the calendar, you could call us up that day, you could send us an email, and we could have an email blast for a special promotion out to your uh, customer base uh, you know, that day or you know, at the latest probably the next morning. So uh, really have the ability to do an email promotion at any time, it's unlimited, uh, and uh, the agent's going to be able to help you with that. The last item here under retention uh, are custom postcards. We do quite a bit, uh, quite a few postcards for our customers. And the reason for that, uh, if you think about it, uh, if we're doing an email match and we're finding somewhere between 20-25% of your database, uh, we're finding an email for, let's say you do uh, a decent job and you collect another 25%. Uh, At best case scenario, you probably have about 50% of your database that we have an email for. So we're only doing retention marketing to that 50%. Well, with postcards, that's a way to reach the enti your entire customer base uh, with a retention message, making sure that they come back sooner and more often. So uh, if you want to reach your entire database, you really need to supplement the emails with the postcards. Now, of course, we're doing everything uh, that we can to make sure we uh, help you collect uh, emails and we collect emails uh, on your behalf as well. So. Uh, we're perfectly okay uh, with sending fewer postcards and more emails, and, and we'll help you move in that direction if you start out 
uh, with postcards um, is perfectly okay with us if you, if you do fewer postcards uh, as you go along in the program. You know, we're uh, big believers in email. Uh, you know, their uh, emails probably have gotten uh, somewhat of a bad rap. You know, everybody's familiar with spam. Uh, but uh, we're big believers in it. And, uh, you know, the good news is that those are the details we sweat uh, for the shop. You know, we, we think about those things. We, uh, and I have a, the next slide after this really talking about deliverability and what we're able to do for you in that area. But, you know, I say the email has the it factor. This is really my, uh, my David Letterman take on the top ten. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can see here by the list that there are a lot of great reasons uh, to, to use emails. And, and really it's summed up by saying it works. Uh, you know, we get, uh, we've been able to track emails against postcards over the last five or six years. Uh, and we've been able to see that uh, emails typically get a better response rate. Uh, so, um, you know, we're seeing upwards between uh, 15 and even upwards to 30% response rate uh, on our emails. Uh, and our, our postcards see roughly the same window, but uh, emails are just a little more consistent on the upper end of that response rate. So uh, the great news is that, yes, uh, you know, we know there's spam out there. I guess that's not necessarily great news, but the great news is that uh, we're able to manage that, uh, that for you. So we do all those things that you'd do if you had time to do them uh, by way of uh, making sure that all your emails reach the inbox uh, of your customers. And there's some tricks of the trade, things that we do. Uh, we, have, uh, we partner with folks uh, that help us in that regard as well. Uh, and uh, there's definitely things that we can do. For example, we have a sender score, something that uh, we, we monitor uh, as a way of measuring uh, our deliverability. How, uh, how well are we able to reach the inbox of uh, you know, Gmail, Yahoo, uh, MS, uh, the Microsoft Hotmail, et cetera. Uh, so we actually measure that. Uh, we monitor it. Uh, we do things to make sure that uh, the emails reach their inbox. We, we test all of our emails uh, on the uh, various clients to make sure we know what they're going to look like. Obviously, we can increase the relevancy to the consumer by customizing it. In other words, we're going to put the vehicle, put the vehicle mileage. Uh, we're going to put the consumer's name. Uh, we're going to put the next scheduled service that uh, that customer is due for. We're going to put a due date. All those things help to increase the relevancy. So when the consumer sees that email, uh, it feels personalized. It doesn't feel like some generic email. And of course, you know, good list hygiene basically means taking out bad emails so that you don't continue to send to bad emails, which will uh, bring down the sender score. So big believers in email. Uh, just in case you thought that you know, emails were old school, uh, they're actually one of the most effective ways to uh, market to your customers. This is an example of a service reminder. Uh, you know, we typically will actually put a coupon uh, at the bottom of this. This particular one doesn't have a coupon. Uh, but as I was saying, uh, it's, a very, it's all about bringing the customer back sooner and more often. If your customer visits you a couple times a year, uh, you know, bringing them back uh, sooner uh, is going to raise their frequency to say three or four times a year. Uh, we do that by personalizing the message. Uh, items I mentioned uh, just here on the left, the vehicle mileage, uh, the next scheduled uh, service due, uh, the service date, so we give them, uh, the customer a specific date that they'll be due for that service. Uh, we'll pull the recommendations out of the shop management system. So if you're using rec recommendations, uh, if, a, if you service a vehicle, you recommend you know, four things and the consumer only takes advantage of two of them, uh, those other two recommendations uh, can be picked up and put on the service uh, reminder email as well. Uh, we also include the loyalty site link in all of our marketing communications, always bringing the customer back to their personalized vehicle uh, website. Uh, and uh, so you'll also see that link in all of the marketing communications. As I said, there's generally uh, a coupon at the bottom. Uh, it can be, we can have one or two coupons, and it really can be anything that you'd like. Our uh, marketing uh, consultants can work with you to come up with just the right uh, marketing message, marketing coupon in order to bring those customers back, really entice them uh, to coming back to your shop uh, sooner.
As I mentioned, we have an email matching service. Uh, this is not an additional charge. Uh, we can match about 25%. Uh, we do jumpstart most of our customers with four or 500 emails on average. Uh, we provide lots of tools at the front counter. What we find is that the marketing program works even better if the shop is willing to talk about it at the front counter. And so then we provide tools that the shop can use at the front counter. We have a counter card. It's a plexiglass stand that you can put uh, some inserts into, uh, like the one you see here on the screen. Uh, we have a poster you can put on the wall. We actually give you the, a script or the language you can use to ask for the email. Uh, and uh, the counter stands will talk about their customer loyalty website that you'll be creating for them. Uh, and if you just have their email, it's easy for them, uh, easy for you to provide that for them. Great. And Brian, at this point, I would like to get some information from our audience members. Um, to our audience, now that Brian has discussed the use of email in today's repair shops, we'd like to know how often you use email to communicate with your customers. Do you use it daily, weekly, monthly, or hardly ever? Simply just choose one of those options and hit Submit Answer to cast your vote. Again, how often do you use email to communicate with your customers? Daily, weekly, monthly, or hardly ever? If everyone can take a quick second. We'll look at the answers. Thanks to everyone for answering this polling question. And it looks like the majority of people um, with us today actually hardly ever reach out to their customers via email and followed by a, about a third that reach out to their customers monthly. So Brian, with that information, um, I think they can take everything that you've discussed already and learn some new techniques. But let's shift gears and talk more about target market promotions. Oh, very good. You know, interesting uh, statistic. Uh, what we find, and I'll just comment a little bit on the, the survey, uh, on the folks uh, that hardly ever communicate, really talking to everybody. But what we found is uh, email communication is a very personalized way to communicate with the customer. Once the consumer raises their hand and says, I want to communicate with you via email, it's very important that the shop uh, have somebody within the shop that's responsible for regularly checking that email because that consumer assumes that you have the same type of relationship with your email as they have. In other words, if a consumer wakes up in the morning and checks their email and maybe checks it three or four times throughout the day, they're going to assume that the shop owner also has that type of relationship. So real important, especially if this is something that you're new to or getting involved in for the first time, that you designate somebody in the shop to check the email regularly. You will get regular email communications uh, requesting appointments, uh, asking questions, asking uh, for estimates. And so it's very important that uh, the shop embrace, you know, maybe a new type of a relationship or a different relationship than they've had in the past with their email. In, in talking, uh, moving ahead here, uh, talking about our target market promotions, this is an email target market promotions. And I've got a few rules about how to do a good email target market promotion. Uh, really what you want to do is you want to generate specific business. And the, wor the reason we use the word target market promotions and not target marketing promotions is because really you're taking a slice of your market or a slice of your customer base and you're sending them a unique message. And what we find is when you're able to take that slice, let's say it's customers who haven't been to your shop for over 12 months, uniquely identify them and give them a, a special promotion, uh, we find that those are more effective typically than even, say, an email blast out to all of your customers, which is something that we can do also. But if you're going to do that email blast to all of your customers, uh, then uh, we're going to want to make sure uh, that you continue to make that message feel special. And you'll notice that as one of the bullets here uh, on the rules for great promotions. Obviously, having a great headline, you want to get – uh, the customer's attention. Uh, you'll see that there's a banner uh, there at the top uh, that talks specifically about the promotion. Uh, and so that all those things are very important. Uh, you know, 
uh, offer that they can't refuse. You know, you don't want to make it the same old something that they may feel like they could go to your website and find. If let's say you consistently run a 10% off sort of special on your website, you want to make it feel more special than that. So uh, if you can make it feel special, maybe it's a new piece of equipment, maybe it's a new employee that you want to talk about, maybe you've changed locations, maybe you've got a new sign out front. Uh, any of those things, you know. Uh, could be reasons to, uh, that you could use in making this communication feel special. Having a deadline, uh, we actually encourage shorter deadlines uh, in terms of days, uh, you know, a week maybe at the longest, uh, or maybe even just a few short days. So having a deadline, having a great headline, keeping it special, uh, and making a great offer. Those are the types of things that we work with uh, the shops with, and our agents, our consultants work with the shops with in communicating or creating these email marketing promotions. Uh, you can simply email your agent or call them and they'll create the promotion for you. They'll create the list of customers and with your approval we'll send it out. I wanted to talk a little bit about this personalized website that we create for every customer that comes into your shop. Uh, really what we're doing is uh, using that owner auto site website as a way of tying that consumer to your shop. Uh, so, uh, you know, only the work that's done at your business is going to show up in the service history. And once the consumer realizes that, uh, that is what's going to drive them back to your shop. This really replaces uh, all those receipts that are stuffed in the glove box, uh, you know, kind of uh, helter-skelter. Uh, I know that's typically how uh, what my glove box looks like. Uh, and so this really replaces it, it organizes it, and consumers really appreciate being able to see their history uh, by way of the website. So as I mentioned, all the marketing communications have a link in it. Uh, the postcards actually have this link, but they'll have to type it in, obviously, if it's uh, on the postcard. Uh, and they simply uh, put in an email address that they want to use to communicate uh, via the owner auto site. And, uh, and then that's it. Uh, it's very easy to log in. Uh, then when they come back to it, it automatically logs them and they don't have to put in any credentials after that. As I mentioned, service history, uh, you'll notice on the left side of the screen here that there's a, a row of buttons. There's uh, six buttons down the left side. And uh, from top to bottom, uh, we'll start with history. Uh, we take the service history. We simply take the labor item labor line items. We don't take parts descriptions. We don't take any notes that you might have entered about the customer or about the service. We just take the work requested and the work performed and take those line items and put it in the service history. Uh, we also have the uh, date uh, of the service, the mileage, and the invoice number, and as I mentioned, the description. We also put the OE service. Uh, this odometer actually has uh, the projected mileage for the vehicle, and it will show uh, and highlight the next OE service that they're due for. So it'll automatically bring them to this page for the next service that they're due for. Uh, and this really helps to uh, reinforce uh, the idea that regular maintenance on the vehicle uh, is a good thing. Uh, it can help them, uh, you know, not be stranded at the side of the road, uh, increase the um, or decrease the total cost of ownership by avoiding costly repairs by maintaining the vehicle. So reinforcing that message, you know, not everybody drives around with the idea that, you know, there's a particular mileage that they'll need to have their vehicle serviced at. Some of us have that sort of consciousness that, yeah, there's a there's an oil change interval, there's an OE service interval, but not all consumers do. So having this website really helps to reinforce that concept. Uh, and then in addition to the service history, the OE services, uh, I meant to point out with the owner auto site, with the OE services, you'll notice that, again, we're replacing uh, what may have otherwise been the owner's manual uh, that has the scheduled services in the glove box. We're providing all the OE scheduled services for that vehicle. So not only are we replacing all those receipts that get stuffed into the mailbox or jammed in there, but we're also replacing uh, you know, the scheduled service intervals that may already be uh, in the owner's manual, which may or may not still be in the glove box. Uh, we also include about 150 three-minute videos, very high quality. Uh, these are provided by our partner, AutoNet TV. 
so if they're looking at their scheduled services, maybe what to do next, uh, they notice that uh, there's something, let's say, about breaks uh, that needs to be serviced during their next visit, they can simply go here, click on breaks, and watch a video about uh, what's included in that service, typically included, and why it's important to do that service. And what we find is that when you're able to educate your customer, uh, they know what's involved, uh, they know why it's important, and they're much more likely to purchase that service. So again, not only providing the history, but really reinforcing that uh, scheduled service message, including educating the consumer on what's involved in those services. Uh, you'll notice a couple other buttons here at the bottom. Uh, I'll just briefly talk about them. We do put uh, coupons on their website. Uh, we have a request for appointment uh, in which the shop will receive an email when they make that request. We have something called Online Service Advisor also, which is really a series of questions uh, that allows you to collect information and have that information uh, already uh, available to you when the customer comes in. So it'll walk through a series of questions. It really goes hand in hand with requesting appointment, uh, but they can go through and it basically says, uh, you know, I'm having uh, my, my vehicles pulling to the left uh, or my car has a sound uh, you know, in one of the breaks you know, and we'll, they'll ask the question with the service advisor. Uh, the online service advisor tool will ask them is it the left or the right, the front or the back, is it a squeal or a grind and so that you have that information when the consumer comes to your shop. About the thank you emails, again, these are triggered by posted invoices. These are really, again, building that loyalty message, showing your gratitude. Uh, we, all, we also use the thank you email as a way of collecting a review, which is part of our social CRM product level. Uh, and so triggered by a posted invoice, uh, we allow you to customize that message. You can have a different coupon on your thank you uh, than uh, the coupon that we put on your service reminders. Uh, again, these uh, last two bullets really have to do with the social CRM product level where we'll put your Facebook link and then also the review link for collecting feedback uh, from the consumer. Uh, I mentioned postcards. It's really the only way to market to all of your customers. We do a really nice job of creating uh, really whatever branding uh, you'd like and we'll work with you on that. Obviously, custom. Uh, custom postcard, uh, we call them covers or uh, custom postcard uh, graphics. And so um, obviously a very good looking card here. These are the types of things that we do. Uh, this is an example of one of our custom cards. Uh, also, uh, you can customize the message on the back, obviously including the coupons. Again, reinforcing your branding, uh, you know, reinforcing the professionalism uh, that you provide at your shop. We also use uh, default artwork, uh, which is to say if you don't want to customize the postcard, we do have uh, default artwork or standard uh, artwork available that we send out and we change on it every month or so uh, to make sure that you have a fresh message in front of your customers. And this is one example of that. All right, Brian. Um, while, while we have a moment, let's take some time to get some more input from our audience. To our audience members, after talking a little bit more about reaching out to your, to your customers, how do you encourage customers to come back to your shop instead of going to a competitor? You can choose all that apply here. Um, the options are emails, postcards, promotional mailers, great service, or something else. Again, how do you encourage customers to come back to your shop instead of going to a competitor? Go ahead and choose any, um, any or all of those that apply. Also, if you have any questions at any point for Brian, we will have a Q&A at the end of today's webcast. So you can go ahead and submit those questions um, on, your, on your screen there, and we will uh, go through them and ask Brian at the end of the presentation. And thanks, everyone, for answering the second polling question today. Looks like the majority of people encourage their customers to come back based on their great service. That's wonderful. Um, followed also by postcards, which we just talked about, and emails. So Brian, with those statistics, I will turn things back over to you to talk about the complete solution. Great, Shannon. Thank you very much. 
you know, I, I just want to commend everybody on, uh, you know, the answers there and, and the fact that you guys are providing great service. Um, you know, there are, um, I think it also points out that, um, you know, although you, you do provide great service and I know that you really work very hard to wow the customer uh, and make sure that they uh, feel well taken care of, you'll notice that the largest percentage of answers was that you're providing great service. And I think that also says that to some degree the bar has been raised. Um, you know, it, it's kind of uh, the, the ante, if you will, to actually provide great service. Now it's kind of what are you doing above and beyond to make sure that customer comes back. And I really think that speaks to what we're talking about here, which is, yes, providing great service is part of it, uh, and obviously very, very important, um, but there are other things that you may need to do in order to distinguish yourself from uh, everyone else um, out there in the marketplace. I'm going to talk about uh, the new customer acquisition side of this. As I said, uh, you know, we divide our product between eCRM, which is our retention product, uh, and then the new customer acquisition, which we call social CRM. So I want to talk a little bit about the social CRM features and how we help the shop to raise their visibility in their community and on the Internet uh, as a way of attracting new customers to the business. So new customer acquisition. Uh, here, you know, and I'll read through the bullets real quick. Uh, and uh, just to give you an idea of what we're providing, again, just in case you thought it was expensive or it was, you know, a lot of work, uh, you know, this solution is around a couple hundred dollars a month. Uh, you know, if you start comparing that to maybe what you're paying in Yellow Page ads, uh, you know, in the in the phone book uh, a few short years ago, uh, I think it probably <laughs> is a quite a bit better price value. Uh, you know, I know that those uh, Yellow Page ads can be hundreds or even thousands of dollars. So. Um, again, uh, it's a do-it-for-you type program uh, and, uh, and a great price value. So uh, we have automatic customer review collection, and I'll talk about why that's important uh, to your business to, to actually collect reviews and customer feedback. Uh, the search engine friendly review content. So uh, not only do we collect those reviews, but we make sure that they're visible on the Internet so that um, it helps your shop uh, receive visibility. Uh, we have AutoNet TV web tools video, uh, blog, and content. So uh, not only do we provide those uh, AutoNet TV videos in our owner auto site, as I was just pointing out, but we also use those AutoNet TV videos for content on your Facebook page and on your web page, uh, if you want to put them on your web page. Uh, the email matching with eCRM, we'll do that one-time match. We'll find four or 500 emails, and then we'll give you the tools to collect emails uh, at the front counter. With social CRM, we'll actually do it ongoing, so no additional charge uh, for the email match, uh, and uh, every quarter we'll send your database out to be matched. So if you've had new customers come in since you started the program, we'll continue to try to find uh, emails for you uh, with social CRM ongoingly, uh, with eCRM just a one-time match when you start the program. Facebook page creation, we will create a Facebook page if you don't already have one. Uh, if you do have one, we'll use the one that you uh, have already created. Uh, and then we'll uh, create some Facebook content. Uh, and really what we're doing, we're not managing your Facebook page per se. Uh, really, it, that's what you need to be doing as far as being engaged in that process and communicating and being part of your community. What we're doing is we're installing a couple of applications with, it's within your Facebook page that regularly push content so that you have fresh content, uh, your, uh, the folks uh, within your community are regularly seeing new information uh, and uh, as a way of raising your visibility there on Facebook. So you may be asking, you know, why is it important for me to have a social CRM strategy or uh, to have a social CRM type product? Uh, as we know, uh, it, once upon a time, uh, we used to get the yellow pages. The book would show up, you know, on the front porch or in the driveway. We'd put it in our cabinet where we keep all of our phone books, uh, and we'd have the white pages and the yellow pages, and maybe a couple different versions of yellow pages. And that's how we would find a business or a service uh, in our local area. Uh, today, I know I, I don't know about you, but I've recently received a phone book in my driveway and I felt very uh, fortunate that it was right by my recycle bin because I don't even think I even had to stand up. I simply bent over, picked it up, and put it into my recycle bin. Uh, 
because the fact of the matter is people don't use the Yellow Pages to find businesses anymore. They really go online and do a search, and I think uh, most, uh, if not all, will agree with me on that one. Uh, the review content helps your search ranking. Uh, so what we're seeing is there's a trend. Uh, more and more consumers are researching the businesses that they frequent or the businesses that they're looking to frequent uh, by going online, putting the business's name in, and the word reviews. And uh, what we find is those shops that have reviews uh, have better visibility on the search engines. So it's really a matter of relevancy, and I'll talk more about that. Uh, simply put, the search engine's job is to find relevant information for the consumers. Businesses with reviews are viewed as having uh, better relevancy, being more relevant. If co consumers are talking about your business, the search engines are going to see that as being a more relevant vi business as opposed to a shop where that conversation is not taking place. Video content helps your ranking. Uh, so. Uh, we also, as I mentioned, we push the videos to your Facebook page, and then we also provide them to you to put onto your web page. Uh, it's all about content. You'll hear that word over and over. When the search engines go out, search engines go go out, you know, on a, on a nightly, daily basis, they're constantly uh, indexing or spidering the web, uh, looking for, looking at websites, looking at what's changed, what's new. Uh, they're very focused on content. Uh, the amount of content, how often it's updated, the last time it was updated. So we p provide these videos to have you put them on your website, these AutoNet TV videos, as a way of giving you that, that increased visibility to the search engines. Uh, the last bullet I have here, uh, the Facebook builds uh, customer relationships. It's really about being part of the community. Uh, you know, most shops are already a part of their community, whether it's uh, sponsoring a, the uh, Little League team, uh, whether it's uh, being a part of the local PTA, uh, and this is really just an extension of that. Then the great news is that you can bring visibility to what you're doing in the community as a way of bu building up that goodwill, as a way of having your existing customers pass along uh, your name to uh, their friends, and, um, and that's uh, what we're helping you do by way of Facebook. Uh, just some Facebook facts, you know, I, I think I could sum this slide up by saying, uh, you know, I, I'm shocked that, uh, you know, my own mother uh, it has a Facebook account. Uh, it's really a great way to stay in touch, especially if you have people spread across the country. Uh, it's not just uh, a bunch of kids playing around on the Internet. 70% uh, of those that are on the Internet have a Facebook account. Uh, so uh, just in case you thought that, uh, you know, it was just a couple of people out there goofing around, uh, you know, it's 70% of those that are on the Internet actually have a Facebook account. This slide is really just pushing, uh, pointing out the same thing. Uh, you know, it's a demographic-wise, those that are out there, it's slightly uh, slanted towards uh, female, sort of 60-40-ish. Uh, the age range is probably the most eye-opening uh, figure here. The age range is slanted at 25 to 54-year-olds. So again, uh, it's not necessarily younger folks. It's really being braced across the board in terms of uh, demographics, whether it be gender, age, income, or education. Uh, a, a lot of people are out there uh, representing a broad range uh, of customers and those that are, are most likely to frequent your business. Just a little bit about search engine basics. Uh, you know, the job of a search engine, uh, like Google, is to uh, really bring up relevant information. So it actually, it, it, there's, it's actually doing a lot in the background that you may not be aware of. When Google does a search, uh, it actually measures how long you stay on the site that you found while, when do, by doing that search. So if you stay on that page longer, it actually helps the relevancy of that page based on the search terms that you put in. So its job is to make sure it's providing relevant content. And there's a few things that we know for sure. The consumer reviews help search relevancy. Uh, you know, there are over 200 different criteria that search engines use, and it's a very dynamic situation uh, where uh, it's changing constantly. Uh, and so really what we're helping you to do with these consumer reviews are to uh, really increase your relevancy. 
And what we've found is that uh, you know, 20 of the top criteria that Google uses have to do with review. So out of those 200, uh, again, very dynamic situation where the relevancy of each criteria is changing regularly. So it's definitely a moving target. Uh, you know, nine of these 20 uh, relevancy factors have to do with the reviews. And here I'm just pointing them out. The, the volume of reviews, the velocity of the reviews, positive ratings, obviously, is it better than a negative? A positive sentiment, which is uh, basically the words that are used to end those reviews. So are they saying, using positive words or not so positive words? Uh, the general data quality, so we want to make sure that uh, you know, the data is put together in such a way that the search engines understand and can use it. Uh, the product keywords, uh, we include categories. Uh, we include the shop profile, again, as a way of increasing relevancy. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the local search. Uh, one in five searches, uh, Google realized very early on, are done uh, as a local search or looking for a local business. Uh, and so obviously we want to put the city in there. And then a the couple of negative items, if you get negative reviews uh, or negative sentiments, so the words that they use or the ratings that they use are negative. So again, reviews are very important. Nine of the top 20 uh, have to do with reviews. Uh, and so uh, that's why the search engines look at reviews as uh, a way of understanding whether a business is more relevant than another. Uh, as part of the Social CRM product, uh, we do give you a business review page where you have your shop information, all of your reviews, and the ability to manage those reviews. And uh, this is really just an example. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, we put a link in a thank you email uh, that goes out after the visit. Uh, the consumer clicks on it and they're able to respond or give their review. It's very simple, very quick. And then the shop can actually respond back. And that's what I'm pointing out with these arrows. Uh, not only, uh, you know, you may think, well, I'd only respond back if uh, I got a negative review, uh, really trying to maybe clear up a miscommunication. But in this particular case, uh, this shop is actually commenting back to the positive. In other words, the, they got a positive review and they're thanking the consumer for uh, giving them the positive feedback and being a customer of the business. Uh, this is really showing that when someone does a local search, uh, this shop had only three reviews because they had just started the program, but it's already helping their relevancy with the Google search engine. Uh, you know, you may not be aware that there are third-party review sites out there like Yelp and Insider Pages and on and on uh, Google reviews. Uh, so the point is, is that there's a conversation occurring out there whether you participate in it or not. Uh, you may have a bad review that's out there uh, and has been out there and actually been hurting your reputation that you're not aware of. The problem with these third-party reviews is that they're anonymous. You don't know whether it's a competitor, a disgruntled employee, on and on and on. So it's sort of the Wild West with regards to the third-party reviews. So what we are able to do with providing a review site for you, uh, uh, we're able to have, have you have some control over that situation and help you drive velocity in the number of reviews and slant it more towards the positive. Uh, typically, uh, those that uh, you know that use third-party review sites tend to be those that had a bad experience because they go to all the trouble of creating a account on a third-party website and then um, you know going to all the trouble to uh, to basically tell somebody what bad service that they had. Once we're able to provide that link to all the customers that had a positive service and make it easy, uh, now you're much more likely to get a positive review. Here's an example of the link that we put in the thank you. I'll also point out that we actually do phone reviews. So for those customers that don't have closed or don't have, uh, an, we don't have an email for, we'll actually do phone reviews as well as a way of supplementing the, e e the reviews that we're getting by way of this thank you link. Uh, this is really just the collection form pointing out how simple it is. Uh, you, select the stars, you give it a title, and give it a little bit of a description, and that's really it, really just showing how easy it is. Brian, um, that does look pretty easy, and I wanted to jump in real quick because I think now is a good time to get um, our audience involved with our final polling question of the day. You've spoken a good deal about Google, and I'm sure everyone in attendance has used the search engine. Today, for our final question, we'd like to know something more specific. Audience, have you ever searched for your own business on Google? Yes, no, or what's a Google? Um, I'm sure if everybody could just uh, share your thoughts. If you've searched for your business, 
Again, we, still have, um, we will be taking some Q&A at the end. If you have any questions for Brian, please feel free to submit those. And let's see how many people. <laughs> Overwhelming majority, 94, about 94% have searched for their own business on Google. So that, with that, Brian, I will turn things back over to you to wrap things up by talking a little bit more about some review options that are out there. Very good. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, that's great uh, that you're aware. Um, you know, Google, you know, obviously we optimize the program for other search engines besides Google. Uh, but Google realized very early on that uh, one in five searches were done uh, for a local business, and they were the first to do the map with a little pin in it. So they were doing, that's sort of how they uh, dominated their market, by basically providing more relevant information. So that's why we use Google as an example. Um, this is an example of how we integrate those reviews into your Facebook page. As I said, we install a couple of applications, one being uh, an application that present the reviews in your Facebook page. Uh, we also uh, install an application that pushes uh, one Otternet TV video per week to your Facebook page. Again, uh, what occurs is uh, anybody who has liked your business, uh, they will see any new content on their news feed, and then uh, anybody that, uh, they're a fr that are, they're a friend of will also see that information. So the idea is that we're uh, constantly sending content uh, to your page so that it has visibility with your customers and their friends. Uh, I will point out that uh, it makes a lot of sense for the shop not to just rely on this content because you want to make sure you're raising the relevancy of that news item uh, within, that, uh, within your consumer's uh, Facebook page as well. So to the degree that you comment on it, you'll notice if you've been on Facebook, those items that are commented most uh, come to the top of the news feed list. And so that's the kind of thing you'll want to do. You want to comment on these videos and really engage your customers uh, with this content. So that's really what I want to talk about with Facebook. As I said, we push a couple of applications, we install a couple of applications on your Facebook page. Uh, and then uh, really, uh, it's really turned over to you in order to um, you know, engage your customer base and create that dialogue with your community. Uh, last thing I just briefly want to talk about is that a good program should obviously show you the results, show you that the program is working. And the way that we do that is that uh, we send an email out once a month automatically. Uh, you actually have the option to get it weekly, and uh, you may be asking yourself, why would I want it weekly? Uh, the reason that you may want it weekly, so not only do we show you by way of 10 different reports if the program is working, if people are responding, how many emails went out, how many postcards, how many people registered for owner auto site. Uh, how many emails we found for you, all those things. We also provide business insight. Um, we have some third-party data sources that we're able to use to compare you to uh, the average invoice dollars in your state and then also nationally. So you'll know whether you're getting your share of the business or if it's just certain economic conditions that may be affecting everyone across the board. So this is in addition to showing you if the program is working, we're actually giving you business perspective by way of showing you the average invoice dollars as compared to the other shops in your state and nationally. We also do average invoice count, again, so you'll know whether you're getting your share or if it really is the economy or if there's something else that needs to be addressed. Uh, probably a pretty busy looking report uh, for you, but this is really pointing out that we're showing you how you're doing in your business compared with last year down to the very day. We actually count business days and then we compare that business day range with the exact same range last year. Uh, we actually will project out how you're going to finish the month compared to last year. Very simple calculation. We take your average daily sales, we multiply it times the number of business days in the month. That tells you how you're going to finish if you continue at that same average daily sales pace. We compare it to uh, last year's. Uh, the same month last year and then tell you whether you're tracking ahead or behind. Uh, likewise, we show you your average month to date down to the very day, uh, and then we show you the difference whether you're tracking ahead or behind in terms of things like invoice count average, invoice dollars, etc. And then we show you again down to the very day, year to date. How am I doing compared with the same exact time last year? Uh, and uh, so uh, again, 
the great news about doing business with someone who really understands the industry is that we know how important it is for this marketing program to fit into the overall picture for your business. Uh, if, for example, you saw that you're tracking behind uh, with your average uh, with your uh, sales pace, uh, you could call us up and, for example, we could do a target market email promotion maybe to get your uh, business back on track for that particular month. And with that, I uh, just wanted to point out that uh, we are compatible with the majority of management systems out there and really emphasize that you can have it all. You know, you need to look for a comprehensive solution, uh, uh, one in which, you know, you have somebody helping you with the program where you don't have to spend a ton of t your own time uh, on a monthly basis making sure that you're getting value from the program. You want one that uh, is working automatically in the background on your behalf. Uh, and that's really uh, all I had uh, this afternoon, and I want to thank you all and uh, turn it back over to Shannon. Well, thanks, Brian, for all that information on what customer retention marketing is, how you can implement it in your shop, and the benefits that you can reap by properly focusing on this side of the business. And I know we covered a lot of ground today, and we have a number of great questions that have come in from our audience. So we'll take just a couple minutes real quick and go through some of them. One of the first questions is, do we have the ability to delete prices paid for services on the customer service history service? Uh, you actually have the ability to make the service history go away completely. Uh, making the uh, dollars disappear, that is something that we're working on. But today, the option is either to have the service or not. But uh, the dollars um, are going to appear, at least today. And as I said, that's something that we have heard uh, some feedback that that's something that uh, shops would like to have the option on, and, and we're working towards that. Okay. Another question from an audience member. If you have more than one shop, do you have set different sites and logins for each store? Uh, it is it is separate for uh, each store. Uh, so each store is going to have their own uh, set of customers and, uh, and login. Okay. Um, this question comes from um, someone in the body shop business. It says, Brian, I am in the body shop business, and we market the insurance agents as well as fleet customers. Do you believe that too many, too many visits are overkill and more emphasis should be put towards marketing the consumer themselves? Too many visits are overkill. Well, you know, what we see is that uh, – the average number of visits is uh, in the marketplace is somewhere around uh, just south of two visits. So I don't think there's a ton of fear in over-marketing or trying to drive too many visits. Uh, I think that uh, you know the number of visits uh, more likely. And it's interesting because what we find is that when we ask shops. Uh, you know, how many times their average customers will visit them, they'll typically say a number quite higher than their actual average. The actual average uh, is uh, less than uh, two visits. Uh, and, but the discrepancy is that uh, for most shops, the average customer is visiting less than one time a year. And so uh, there's at least one more visit that most shops could uh, see from a consumer. And so, you know, I, I think there's still a huge opportunity to reinforce that, that maintenance message uh, and, and bring that customer back at least one or two more times a year. I think there's still a, a huge upside to be seen there. Okay. Um, another question. You mentioned managed reviews. And with your program, can you remove a review? If so, will there be a filtered view? You know, what we do in order to allow the shop to manage is that um, the, your, there are organically entered reviews. So most of the reviews are going to come by way of the link uh, in the email. Uh, what we do is we notify a shop uh, if they've gotten a low review, and uh, we give them 14 days uh, in order to reconcile them. So it sort of goes into this. Uh, this waiting state, uh, it doesn't get published, and then the shop has time to work and communicate 
uh, with that customer in order to, to clear up that issue. We do also provide a rescore opportunity, which is unique to the product. In other words, in most cases, when you get a review, you don't get a second chance for that consumer to say, oh, you're right, now that we've cleared up that communication, um, I'll give you a different review. But what we allow you to do is actually rescore uh, or ask for a second chance from that consumer. So uh, to answer the question, uh, organic reviews where we can't prove that that customer, uh, that consumer was actually at the shop, uh, those are available to be deleted. Uh, but the ones that come by way of the email link, typically we're not going to let them be deleted. Uh, there are rare instances where that's the case. One point that I'd make, you know, and I may not have time to do it justice, but uh, what we see out there is that uh, because third-party reviews are being manipulated, uh, folks that have all five stars have really are have lower credibility than uh, shops that have, let's say, four and a half stars, because the consumer, knowing that the uh, reviews are being manipulated, will suspect that the shop is manipulating those reviews if they have just five stars. So I just wanted to make the point that although you may think that it's better to have all five stars, it's really better to actually to have just less than five stars so that your reviews that you do have have more credibility. That makes sense. Um, we will have time for just a couple more questions before we wrap up. Um, if Another question is, if we switch over to Mitchell One, can you capture all of the emails that we have out there with a competitor? Uh, the answer is that we take them out of the management system. So if those emails are in the management system, uh, there isn't any reason why we can't uh, bring those emails in and use them to market on your behalf. Okay. Um, another question is, will this system allow us to email or text estimates and invoices while a job is still open in our Mitchell Manager software? Uh, there is the ability to do that with our latest product, our Manager SE product. Uh, so uh, you can use, uh, obviously, the emails uh, that you've collected to uh, send estimates, ROs, and invoices. Uh, with our latest product. So if you're on what we typically refer to as our 5.9 product uh, and you move to our latest SE product, uh, you can uh, email estimates, ROs, and invoices. Okay. Um, and then our last question for today, uh, what software is required to utilize this program? Is it Microsoft-based, Mac-based, or both? Uh, it, it works. Uh, it's PC-based. Uh, as far as the consumer goes, uh, they, could, they can be on a Mac and still get their personalized website. Uh, but, uh, you know, because the shop management systems out there are all are PC-based, uh, we're PC-based as well. So uh, if uh, the shop owner has uh, one of the management systems out there, one of the more popular ones, and maybe even a few that aren't as popular, uh, and those are going to be on PC. So, yeah, it's going to be a PC environment for all right. Well, Brian, I appreciate you taking the time to answer all of those questions. We had a ton come in from the audience. I would like to thank all of our attendees today for spending some time with us. Hopefully you've learned some new ideas and processes that you can use to boost your bottom line. And if you'd like to see any part of this presentation again or share it with someone else, archives will be available at motorage.com slash social CRM. Thanks to Brian Warfield with Mitchell One for sharing CRM ideas and information about social CRM from Mitchell One with us today. We hope that you enjoyed today's webcast, and with that, we'll let you all get back to your shops. Thanks for joining us, and have a productive rest of your day.